Bless you. Bless you. I want to invite your attention to the Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 7. The Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 7. And the verses that I want to read are verses 9 through 15. The Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 7. And verses 9 through 15. All right, if you have it. Uh, I'll give you a moment. This is Judges chapter 7, the Old Testament book of Judges, the 7th chapter. And I'm going to begin reading with verse 9. And I shall read down through verse 15. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, Go thou with Fura, thy servant, down to the host. Thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites, or the Amalekites, all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay alone. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the hosts. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped. And returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of men. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about encouraged for the challenge. Encouraged for the challenge. Amen. The Bible is full of great men and women who have accomplished great things. For God. Uh, in the Bible, you read about some of them, you read about them and how great they became uh, in spite of their shortcomings and their mess ups. Uh, they were not perfect people, they were faulty, but yet uh, they accomplished great things for God. To mention uh, some of them, Abraham was a liar who became a leader. Jacob was a thief who became a theologian. Moses was a murderer who became a minister. Solomon was a womanizer who became the wisest man who ever lived. Paul was a persecutor who became one of God's best preachers. All of them were great people who did great things for God. In our lesson, we look at a man named Gideon. In our description of him, he was a farmer who became a freedom fighter. We see that he was chosen by God to lead Israel out of oppression. Uh, we find that uh, the children of Israel were being oppressed and misused and abused. They were impoverished. Uh, they were amid hard times because of their enemies. And you will find this uh, periodically when you read in the book of Judges and what God would do is he would raise up deliverers, which are called judges. Uh, he would raise up judges or leaders who would lead the people uh, out of the oppressive hand of their enemies. Uh, we find that in the book of Judges, every time God would, 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 would help Israel out when they got in trouble, they would get in trouble again by turning away from God. And, and, and when the enemy began to press them and, and hurt them so bad, then they come running back to God. 
saying, God, forgive us. We stray from you. Help us. And God, being the merciful God that he is, would, would hear their cry and would send help. And he would do it by raising up a leader uh, that was known as a judge to deliver them uh, out of the oppressive hand of their enemies. Isn't it good to know that God is the God of another chance? No matter how many times we fail him, he's always merciful and loving enough to just give us another chance. And so that's what God kept doing for Israel. And so we see at the time of the text that the Midianites and the Amalekites were oppressing Israel. And, and, and God is now going to begin to do something. And so he's going to use a man by the name of Gideon. He's going to use Gideon. Uh, to lead them from the oppressive hand of their enemies. Listen, God always has somebody uh, to, to, to rise up and lead uh, when we are amid a challenge. Even in times like these, listen, God is still raising up leaders. Uh, they may not necessarily be called judges nowadays, but, but he's still raising up leaders. Amen. Amen. And so God would, would raise up another leader for Israel. And in this text, his, his name was Gideon. When you get to the uh, seventh chapter of the book of Judges, uh, you will find that uh, Gideon has already sounded the trumpet uh, to, to rally uh, the armies of Israel. Uh, we find that in the sixth chapter, uh, uh, Gideon had trouble uh, with this assignment. He was afraid and he wanted some assurance and some certainty. And God gave him uh, plenty of that. And so God is going to do it again in this seventh chapter. And now we see that Gideon has sounded the trumpet when you read the story. And in this seventh chapter we see that uh, 32,000 men have showed up uh, supposedly ready to go into battle against the Midianites. But to Gideon's surprise, and to the surprise of all the others, God told Gideon that uh, the people that you have are too many. you got too many. Uh, and so uh, uh, if I give you the victory now, uh, you're going to think that you did it yourselves. So he said, I want you to tell all them that's scared to go home. And out of 32,000 men, 22,000 packed their stuff and went to the house. Isn't that something? So Gideon was now left with 10,000 men. And God came back to him again when you're reading this seventh chapter and said that you still have too many. I want you to take them down to the river and uh, let them drink it. I'm going to try them there. And, and so when God got through trying them, he reduced the army down again. He, he reduced it down 9,700, and Gideon was left with 300. And God told him, by the 300, I'm going to give you the victory. Isn't that something? Many times we think the more you got, the stronger you are. But God shows us, I don't care how much you got, with him, only with him can we have the victory. Amen. Sometimes God have to have to take from us so he can give us something better. Sometimes God got to move some people out of our lives so that he can bless us more. Amen. Amen. And so God has reduced his army down to 300. So in this seventh chapter, now with the 300, uh, God's going to give Gideon something that he really needed for this challenge. God gave him some encouragement. Amen. God gave Gideon the encouragement that he needed for this challenge. Listen, you know he ended up getting the victory. He and the 300 got the victory. But before they got the victory, God gave Gideon the encouragement that he needed for this challenge. And listen, 
you and I will be challenged from time to time. And God knows there are times we need encouragement. Sometimes we're going to be outnumbered, uh, like Gideon and his army. Sometimes problems are going to pile up in our lives. The odds are going to be against us. And God knows we need encouragement. We need encouragement because of the problems that we have to deal with. We got, we got, we got challenges because of problems. We need encouragement. Sometimes because of the pain that we experience. We need encouragement. And then sometimes with the people that we have to deal with, we need encouragement. And listen, this text lets me know when it seems like you have no help, when it seems like you're in it all by yourself, when it seems like you're doing the best you can and you don't have any help at all, God got away of stepping in to give you the encouragement that you need. And so as we look at Gideon here, we see that God is going to give him encouragement. And brothers and sisters, as we look at the text, there are some lessons that we learn from Gideon concerning this particular assignment. There are some insight that he gives us as to how God blessed him to get the encouragement that he needed. Number one, look at verse nine. The first principle is we got to be in time with God. Be in time with God. Look what the verse says. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. Now, the same night of the day that God reduced his army down to 300. God told Gideon, I want you to get up and go down to the host of the Midianites. I want you to listen to something. I want you to hear what they have to say. And Gideon went on down that same night. He was in time with God. Yes, you'll miss a whole lot because we're not in time with God. He didn't drag his feet. He didn't procrastinate. He didn't wait around. He acted promptly. Listen, how many blessings have we missed because we didn't act promptly when God told us to move? You know, we, we had to drag our feet, had to walk around, had to get second and third opinion. And, and many times because we were dragging around. We would miss what God had for us. Gideon was pumped. He was, he was, he was in time with God. And listen, anything that's successful in this life involves a sense of timing. Listen, even in our churches, timing is so important. Do you know that choir can't sing right without a sense of timing? You got to know when to come in. <laughs> you, you got, listen, you, there's a timing of it. A couple can't dance right without timing. Listen, even when you cook, there's a timing element involved. A basketball team can't successfully do a fast break without having timing. Listen, we as black people are what we call a rhythmic people in and yet, as rhythmic as we are, many times we're out of step with God. Hmm. Gideon, every time God told him to do something, he did not hesitate when it came to offering up a sacrifice that God told him to offer up, when it came to throwing down Baal's altar, when it came to reducing the army. The text let me know that Gideon was in time with God. Listen, do you know what it's called? When you do something tomorrow that God told you to do today, it's called disobedience. Be in time with God. Do what he said without complaining, without critiquing, without criticizing. Gideon got the encouragement that he needed because he was in time with God. You know, a lot of times 
we testify uh, and we sing that song, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. He sure is. But are we in time with God? It's important that we are in time with God, that we move as prompt as God tells us to move. Okay? The other thing that I want to mention here in this text is in verse 10. In verse 10, uh, we, we see that, that from Gideon, we learn the lesson of being in tune with a partner. Being in tune with a partner. Listen to what God says in verse 10. If you are afraid to go down, take fear of thy servant with you down to the host. And you're going to hear something. All right? And he said, after you hear something, you're going to be encouraged to go into battle. And so he had a partner, according to verse 10. He had a servant by the name of Fura. Fura, he said, God said, take Fura with you. Take him down there with you. If you're afraid to go, get your partner. Get your buddy, Fura. Get your servant. He'll go with you. He's your partner. Listen, many times when God has a task for us, he hooks us up with someone who can aid and assist us. And that's the right partner. Listen, have you ever noticed uh, in so many aspects of life, uh, seem like things work well when you have a partner? Listen, in the TV world, I saw, I've seen it all my life. Uh, that how things would work when a person had the right partner. Look, in the TV world, remember, Starsky had Hutch. Batman had Robin. Green Hornet had Kato. Long Range had Tonto. <laughs> because they had partnership. Amen. Partnership. Well, in the Bible, we see the same principle. Look, Moses had Joshua. Naomi had Ruth. David had Jonathan. Elijah had Elisha. Paul had Barnabas. Partners. How important it is to have somebody that can be on the same page with you. That's, that's wanting to do God's will like you. To have a partner. You understand what I'm saying? One of the most uh, spiritual couples in the Bible was a couple by the name of Aquila and Priscilla. They were a dynamic duo and they loved the Lord and they helped spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. They ministered to those who preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were very close to Paul. They had a lot in common with Paul. They were tent makers just like Paul. They were Jews just like Paul. They loved Jesus just like Paul. Amen. Partnership. The Bible speaks of partnership. Uh, in Proverbs 27 and 17, we see the benefits of a partnership. Because remember the verse said, iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. It's good to have somebody in your life who can help sharpen you. You know what I'm saying? Who can help you to grow. Who can help you to become better. That's the benefits of partnership. Proverbs 17 and 17 tells us about the brotherhood of partnership. In this verse, concerning Gideon and Pharaoh, we see the beauty of partnership. Listen, to have somebody to sharpen you, to have somebody to be with you in adversity, and to march down to the enemy camp with you, that's beautiful. Gideon had a friend. Amen. Listen, I think that uh, it's good to know how to get along with people because everybody needs a friend. Everybody needs somebody they can they can talk to, somebody they can pray with them, and, and somebody who, who, who loves the Lord like they do, who's willing and striving to serve God and please God for what they do. Gideon had a partner. That he was in tune with. So my brothers and sisters. It's important to have. The right partner. Many times we run into difficulty. Because we choose the wrong partners. 
Gideon had the right part of it. Now check out how he had the right part. It was God. Did you see it in the verse? It was God who told Gideon what partner to take. Let God pick your partners. You know, I think a lot of times we mess up because we pick our own. Why not let God pick your partner? Amen. I'm not just talking about friendship. I'm even talking about relationship. Let God pick your partner. It works better when you let God Pick your partner. All right, so that's two things. First of all, we see that he was encouraged because he was in he was in time with God. Secondly, he was in tune with a partner. But I see a third principle in verses 11 through 14. He was in touch with his enemies. Now, this is something right here. Look at verses 11 through 14. He said, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thine hand be strengthened to go down into the host. Look at the verse. Then when he dined with Pure, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. Verse 12. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, Notice what the verse said. Behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow. He was eavesdropping on a conversation. Listen. And, and he, he, he was listening as one told the other, said, look, I had a dream and I saw a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned and the tent lay all on the ground. And the guy that he was speaking with answered by saying, look, that's nothing but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash. I'm talking about the man of Israel whom God has delivered the Midianites into his hand. Listen, when, when Gideon heard that, that did something to him. Now here's the point. He was in touch with his enemies. Now his enemies didn't know it. Now, see this person. Most of us don't want to be around our enemy. <laughs> we don't have want to be as far away from them as we can get. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if it were left up to us, we wouldn't be within miles of our enemies. But this text is reminding us, sometimes God will use your enemy to give you a blessing. Yo, listen, sometimes it takes having an enemy for you to be in touch with, for God to bless you. No wonder Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Because God got a way of blessing you through your enemies. Amen. Amen. Look here. The devil wants to mess up our mind to get us out of sorts. You know what I'm saying? But listen, sometimes God will use the very one you didn't expect him to use to give you a blessing. And that's what God did for Gideon. David in Psalm 23 said it this way. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Isn't that something? God can keep you around your enemy or keep your enemy around you and your enemy can't stop God from blessing you. Amen. Sometimes some of the best blessings come your way in the presence of your enemies. And so Gideon got the encouragement that he needed and look where it came from. His enemies. My, 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 what a mighty God we serve. I tell you, there is no limit to what God can do. Listen, where is that in the book of Proverbs? When a man's ways please the Lord, 
He make it even his enemies to be at peace with him. God can bless you through your enemy. He can bless you in spite of your enemy. He can bless you after your enemies. Amen. Amen. Be in touch with the enemies. Look at the scene. The enemy didn't know. Listen. The enemy didn't even know that God just used them to encourage Gideon. And you know, a lot of times, what some people do to you, they may mean it for evil, but God will turn it to good. Amen. Amen. Joseph's brothers, you know, what they did to him, they meant it for evil. They had no idea that God was just fixing things up so that their brother Joseph would be the one that God would use to save their lives. Isn't that something? God can take the people who can't stand you and cause them in his own way to be a blessing to you. <laughs> my, my, my. That, that's what happens when you are in time with God, when you connect it with the Lord, when you do what God said do. Amen. He'll take care of your enemies. Amen. He used the enemy to give Gideon the encouragement that he needed. And the enemy didn't even know it. Isn't that something? And listen, I'm glad Gideon didn't act crazy and say, hey, I know that's right. Yeah, you told the truth. No, 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 no. Sometimes when you hear certain things, it's not for you to say something to the folk. Sometimes you just, just take it in and, and go on. You know what I'm saying? That's what Gideon did. He heard and it helped him. He heard and it helped him. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to always talk out when you hear certain things. Sometimes we just need to just listen. Just listen. Somebody has said, there's a reason why God gave us two ears and only one mouth. Because he wants us to learn how to do more listening than we do talking. <laughs> Notice the verse. I'm sticking with the scripture. God told him that in verse 11, go down to the host and thou shalt hear what they say. You're going to hear something. Don't go down there saying nothing. Don't be talking. Just listen. Just listen. Okay? Be in touch with your enemies and listen. Well, that brings me to my final point. Gideon got the encouragement that he needed. First of all, because he was, he was in time with God. Secondly, he was in tune with a partner. Thirdly, he was in touch with his enemies. But finally, he was a total worshiper. Gideon was a total worshiper. You ask me, how do I know that? Look at what the verse said in verse 15. Verse 15 said, and it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, here it is, that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Now here's the point. He was a total worshiper. Notice what the verse did not say. The verse didn't say, and when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, he rushed back to the host and built an altar and offered up a sacrifice. No, no. Right there, where he was, eavesdropping on the enemy's conversation, 
The verse said, he worshiped. <laughs> Listen here. You know, real worshipers ain't got to have no music. Real worshipers don't have to have a choir. Real worshipers don't have to have a musical instrument. Real worship ain't got to wait till they get dressed up. Real worshipers don't have to wait till they get to the church house. You can worship God at any point, anywhere. Look at the text. Right where he was, he worshiped God. Right there. Listen, sometimes you can't wait till later. He said, well, as soon as I get to the church house, I'm going to... You can't wait. You need to worship right then and right there. Amen. Notice what the text said. The verse said, he worshipped. He worshipped. Let me ask you something. When was the, I'm, I'm talking about worshipping. You know what I'm saying? I mean, worshipping. Gideon had just been given the encouragement from God through his enemies. And he worshiped God. You know what I'm saying? Gideon knew where his encouragement came from. The enemy spoke it, but God said it. That's why he worshiped God. You understand? Be a total worshiper. No wonder David said in Psalm 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my, in my mind. Listen, here's the point that I need to bring out in this text. Remember, he's still right there where he was eavesdropping on the enemy. The Bible didn't say nothing about Gideon getting loud. You don't have to be loud all the time to worship. <laughs> I hope y'all can hear me here. You don't have to always be loud every time you worship. There's nothing wrong with making a job at all. But, but it doesn't mean every time you worship, you got to be loud. No. He worshiped, and he was not even loud. He did just think. Just think if he had hollered, I said, Hallelujah! <laughs> it wasn't the time. <laughs> oh, y'all, listen. It was not the time. He could worship God without yelling hallelujah where everybody could hear. You understand what I'm saying? Because the enemy would have seen it. It, it wasn't the time. It just wasn't the time. It just wasn't. It was not the time. But yet he worshiped. He worshiped. And listen, I said that to say this. Don't criticize folk. When we come back to church, whenever that will be, don't criticize folk because they are not up and being loud like you. Just because they are not standing up and jumping all over the place and high-fiving everybody, don't mess with them folk. Because a person can still worship without doing what everybody else is doing. I hope this helps somebody. Amen. And so he was a total worshiper. He did it. If God has done something for you, you ought to show some signs. And one of the signs you can show is worship him. You don't have to have a crowd to worship him. You understand what I'm saying? It was just him and Führer. Führer saw him. He wasn't ashamed to be seen by his buddy. When he worshiped, be a total worshiper. I'm closing now. But you know, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I can't help but bless his name. How many times has God, the Lord Jesus Christ, given you the encouragement that you needed for your challenges? There isn't anything that God can't help you through. Amen. 
When was the last time you were challenged and God sent some encouragement your way? It just lifted your spirits. And did you show some sign by thanking them and worshiping him? Amen. Listen, you know why you ought to worship him? Because of what he did for you. He paid the ultimate price. He gave his life. He paid for our sins. He was buried and rose again. He's going back to glory, and he's coming back for us. Listen, you ought to be ready when he comes. Be in time with God. Amen. Be in tune with the Father. Be in touch with your enemies. And be a total worshiper. And listen, you can always count on God to give you encouragement just when you need it most. Amen. I hope this lesson has been an encouragement to you as much as it is to me. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you, O oh God, that you are our encourager. You have a way of giving us just what we need when we need it most. Now I pray that you'll bless each and every one that has joined in with us for this lesson this evening and your people everywhere. I pray that you'll help them to share the news with somebody else. Let them know that you're able to give encouragement. You can do it in your own way. And we thank you. We thank you, O oh God. We bless your name and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.